हेलो स्टूडेंट्स गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन सो टॉकिंग टू यू आफ्टर लॉन्ग टाइम सो होप एवरी वन डूइंग वेल so actually this is a good time for you so you can revise all the previous things which are covered up till now because most of the topics important topics are covered so you can use this uh, vacation this current vacation for revising all the things the leftover topics are very minimal things so we can finish it through video classes and after coming after uh, lockdown after uh, uplifting of the lockdown okay so hope everyone is listening so today our topic is functioning of instruments in biochemistry so what is the necessity of these instruments in biochemistry so this is the clinical aspect so what is the importance of instruments in biochemistry is it is for diagnosis and treatment okay the main thing is diagnosis so when a patient comes to us patient comes with the symptoms and we will elicit the signs in the patient and after that we will do the general examination and systemic examination and we will conclude that the patient is suffering from a disease of a particular system so after knowing the patient is suffering from which system we have to know he is suffering from which disease we will send the patient for the investigations okay and depending upon the results of the investigations we will conclude a diagnosis and finally we will give the treatment so here the main thing is these instruments are necessary for the investigations which are necessary for diagnosis we know the medicine is completely oriented towards the diagnosis and the treatment of the patient so here you can see all these instruments in biochemistry are necessary for the investigations which are necessary for specific diagnosis of the patient by which we can give the treatment so the common instruments there are many instruments in biochemistry but these are the common instruments which we will use in the routine practice they are centrifuges calorimeter semi auto analyzer fully auto analyzer electrolyte analyzer hb evans analyzer and incubator and distilled water apparatus so coming to the first one centrifuges so what is a centrifuge a centrifuge is an instrument which separates serum from the blood cells we know blood contains serum and blood cells so to get the accurate values of the biochemical substances present in the blood we have to separate the blood cells and the serum because blood cells will interact with the estimations with the reactions so of the biochemical substance with the reagents so these blood cells have to be eliminated so that's why this centrifuge is an apparatus which separates serum from the blood cells so that we can estimate the accurate amount of biochemical substances present in the serum and the principle here is sedimentation principle so this is the centrifuge so here you can see the wells in which the test tubes are placed and after that it is rotated at a specific rpm mostly at 2000 to 3000 rpm at which the serum will get separated from the blood cells and this serum is sent for the analysis and calorimeter you all know what is calorimeter we have you had done many experiments in the calorimeter many estimations you had done so this is the calorimeter you know how to operate the calorimeter and you had already done many experiments many estimation of different substances like glucose urea creatine in our laboratory so what is the first step you will do in the calorimeter the first step we will be doing in calorimeter is we will take the test tubes and we will add the sample and the reagent or we will add the uh, standard and the reagent okay the first thing we will be doing is pipetting pipetting the standard and sample and reagents all these we will do in the first step in calorimeter 
okay pipetting of the reagent and sample in different test tubes so pipetting after pipetting what we'll be doing is we'll pipet the after pipetting we'll keep the test tubes aside for incubation okay we may use we may use glass pipet or auto pipet after that we'll get different colors in the blank standard and test after that we'll keep the test tubes aside for incubation you know what is incubation an incubation is providing the reaction a specific temperature at which the reaction is completed comfortably okay that is incubation so for some reactions the incubation is at room temperature for which we will keep the test tubes aside and for some reactions the incubation temperature may be 100 degrees in that case we will keep the test tubes in the boiling water bath so here the main thing is we will after adding the reagents and the samples we will keep the test tubes for incubation whether it is at room temperature or 50 degrees 60 degrees or 100 degrees okay so first step is pipetting after that incubation you have done all this so you can follow it easily incubation so after incubation what we will be doing is i think you everyone remembered what we will be doing is we'll take the ods in the colorimeter okay ods are nothing but optical density it is nothing but absorption of light by the colored substance so we will take this ods in the colorimeter that is the third step we know and after that final step is after taking the ods what we will do we will calculate by using formula okay these are the ods you had seen and calculation final step is calculation so after pipetting in different test tubes we will incubate after incubation for some time we will take the ods and after taking ods we will calculate by Uh, t minus b by s minus b into some formula okay so after calculation we'll get the results so this is the basic thing that is happening from many years so these are the things which we'll do in the calorimeter method pipetting incubation taking the ods optical densities which is nothing but absorption and calculation of the result so all these we'll do manually in the calorimeter okay so i already told you once if a sample is given it will take half an hour for calculating for one sample if suppose 100 samples comes to us then it will take more than one week so that's why we can't use this method in a regular practice because it will take a lot of time and lot of manpower so that's why we had gone for the advanced versions the auto analyzers so these are the auto analyzers in which there are semi auto analyzer and fully auto analyzer both in semi and fully auto analyzer all the steps that we are doing manually in the calorimeter all will be done but some steps are done by the analyzer and some steps are done by us that is the difference but all the steps should be done to get the results so coming to the semi auto analyzer you had already seen in early clinical exposure Uh, how the semi auto analyzers and auto analyzers are there so this is the semi auto analyzer uh, these are different semi auto analyzers which are routinely used in the clinical practice and this is the semi auto analyzer which is used in the gayatri hospital see in semi auto analyzer the pipetting and incubation are done by us we'll take the reagent and the sample in a test tube which is known as rea vial and incubation is done we can keep it at room temperature or some incubators will be there we'll keep the test tube in the incubator or rea vial in the incubator so the pipetting and incubation will be done by us and we'll give this solution to the machine analyzer and it will read it will take the readings it will take the ods it will calculate and it will display the result on the uh, keyboard okay on the display so the main difference between calorimeter and semi auto analyzer is half the thing is done by the analyzer in the calorimetric method all the steps we are doing and in semi auto analyzer half the steps are being done by the analyzer and remaining half we are doing okay pipetting and incubation we are doing and reading and calculation is done by the analyzer so it is saving some time and manpower so these are the the test we will do in calorimeter we are doing in the test tubes and these are the special test tubes for semi auto analyzer 
which are known as rhea veins okay i think i am uh, audible and visible clearly and after adding the reagent in the sample in the rhea veins we will get some color and these color solutions are given to the machine that means the machine the analyzer will aspirate these solutions okay so here you can see there is one small pipe for aspiration and there is yellow button for aspiration okay after adding the reagents and the samples we will keep the sample at the pipe and we will press the yellow button so that the machine the analyzer will take the sample and after taking the sample it will calculate the odis and it will calculate the results and it will display on the screen so that is about semi auto analyzers which will do half of the work and saves some of our time and coming to fully auto analyzer so fully auto analyzer all the things are done by the machine only so even for semi auto analyzer also if suppose some 200 300 samples comes to a lab it can't be managed by semi auto analyzer by single semi auto analyzer so the manpower should be more so that's why the still more advanced version of analyzer is fully auto analyzer after calorimeter and semi auto analyzer the fully auto analyzer is the more advanced form of analyzer which will do all the steps by itself so these are the fully auto analyzers this also you had seen in the laboratory in early clinical exposure class so these are different types of fully auto analyzers i think i think everyone is listening carefully so this is the fully auto analyzer uh, which is present in the gayatri hospital medica e0 you had seen this so if you see in detail the fully auto analyzer will do all the steps the pipetting incubation taking the odis the readings and finally calculating and it will display on the monitor okay so all the fully auto analyzers are connected with a computer system on which we will give the instructions to the system and finally the analyzer will give the results in the monitor we will give the instructions to the analyzer analyzer is a machine it is not having any mind so we have to give the instructions to the analyzer and depending upon our instructions it will give the result okay and it will display on the monitor so this is the fully auto analyzer when it is open here you can see a different parts where the sample there is place for the samples you can see there is space for the samples and there is place for the uh, reagents the reagents are already placed and there is place for the cuvettes we will add the reagent and sample in the test tubes in the same way there should be there will be cuvettes in the auto analyzer in which the auto analyzer itself adds the sample and the reagents into that cuvette they are known as reaction cuvettes so before starting the auto analyzer we will keep all the reagents and all the samples and all the reaction cuvettes in the analyzer we have to check in the morning whether all the reagents all the sample cuvettes and all the reagent uh, reaction cuvettes are present in the analyzer or not so after all the things are present in the analyzer the remaining work it will be uh, done by the analyzer only so if you see in detail you can see here so this portion if it is enlarged you can see here the reagent bottles which are already placed in the uh, fully auto analyzer <coughs> and in the outer ring you can see the space for the sample cuvettes so different samples are kept in the different spaces for analysis and all the reagents will be kept so these are the reagent bottles you can see these are the reagent bottles kept in the fully auto analyzer and these are the cuvettes which are kept in the outer rings in which the sample is added okay so the reaction cuvettes the number of the reaction cuvettes may differ in different auto analyzers they may be 20 50 or 100 or in some advanced auto analyzers they may be 200 spaces means at a time 200 samples can be analyzed so in our gayatri hospital the size of this cuvettes is 24 so 24 samples can be analyzed at a time 
okay and anyway the reagents all the reagents will be placed before only for any test okay and coming to the other part here the reaction cuvettes will be placed that means the reaction cuvettes are the cuvettes which are necessary for the reaction to take place the analyzer will take the sample and reagent and add in this reaction cuvettes so here you can see the reaction cuvettes so a piece will be having some 10 cuvettes and some 80 to 100 cuvettes 100 uh, cuvettes are placed in a fully auto analyzer so up to 100 tests it can be done comfortably so here you can see the space where the these cuvettes are placed so in in our uh, gayatri hospital the six cuvettes can be placed okay six pieces can be placed these are the cuvettes i think everyone is uh, seeing clearly <coughs> okay so this is about the semi auto analyzer and auto analyzer these are the most important analyzers in the uh, clinical laboratory most of the tests are done by the semi auto analyzer and fully auto analyzer only so semi auto analyzer half of the things will be done by the semi auto analyzer and remaining thing we are doing manually in fully auto analyzer all the things are being done by the fully auto analyzer only whereas in calorimeter we know all the steps we are doing manually okay so in calorimeter as it takes long time this advanced version of semi auto analyzer is uh, discovered and after that the still more advanced is fully auto analyzer in which do in which it will do all the steps and number of samples can be done at the same time in fully auto analyzer in semi auto analyzer it is time saving but some steps we have to do for all the samples whereas in fully auto analyzer all the steps will be done at the same time for number of samples okay that is the advantage of fully auto analyzer but the disadvantage of fully auto analyzer is it maintenance is uh, it takes a little uh, more maintenance and it is not cost effective all the reagents are a little bit costly so coming to the other analyzers electrolyte analyzer so electrolyte analyzer it analyzes the sodium potassium and chloride in the serum and urine the principle is ion selective electrode is placed in the electrolyte analyzer this ion selective electrode will uh, select specific electrolytes it will catch the specific electrolytes from the sample and it will analyze it will estimate the that particular electrolytes and coming to hpa1c analyzer this is the another analyzer i think you had seen the electrolyte analyzer also in your clinical posting and this is hpa1c analyzer which calculates the glycated hemoglobin hba1c i know uh, you know what is hba1c it is a combination of hemoglobin with the glucose glycated hemoglobin so this is detected in case of this is estimated in case of diabetes diabetic patients to know the control of glucose in the blood okay here the principle is fluorescence immunoassay okay immuno detection technique immuno detection technique is nothing but antigen antibody reaction here the hba1c acts as antigen and we will add the antibody to the hba1c so there will be reaction between hba1c and its antibody and it will form a complex and it will give the fluorescence depending upon the concentration of hba1c if more hba1c is present more amount of uh, antigen antibody reaction occurs and we'll get more fluorescence in this way we'll estimate the hba1c levels okay so this is the hba1c analyzer it contains a eye chamber and reader it also contains a chamber also apart from that eye chroma reader so both these helps in estimation of hba1c so all these we are estimating only for diagnosis of a particular disease to give the treatment to the patient next incubator we know uh, in our uh, routine laboratory we had done different experiments and we had kept some of the samples at room temperature and some of the samples in boiling water bath which require 100 degrees centigrade as incubation 
Okay. Similarly, there are incubators in the laboratory. There is a temperature adjustment. Okay. It can be room temperature or 40 degrees or 60 degrees or 100 degrees, anything. But there is temperature adjustment in the incubator. Even room temperature may not be uniform in our room. So in that case also, we can keep the test tubes in the incubator so that the temperature will be maintained uniformly and the reaction will be completed easily. Okay, we know incubation is a temperature which is maintained for the reaction to be carried comfortably. So this is the incubator you can see and uh, in the upper portion there is adjustment of the temperature. You can see so after adjusting the temperature we will keep the test tubes inside the incubator and we will close the door. Okay. And we will keep it for 5 minutes or 10 minutes depending upon the incubation time. So next is the distilled water apparatus. So we know distilled water is very necessary for preparation of blank, for cleaning the different uh, test tubes and for cleaning the probes and for cleaning the different piping system in the semi auto analyzer and fully auto analyzer. So for the distilled water is necessary which is uh, made by the distilled water apparatus. So the tap water is connected to the distilled water apparatus. So when we open the tap water, it will go to the distilled water apparatus where it is distilled and it will come out in the, the distilled water will come out in another pipe. So this is the distilled water apparatus used in the laboratory, which is connected to the tap water and it is distilled and distilled water is <coughs> given to us in the another pipe. Hope everyone is clear. Okay. So what are the common parameters estimated in the biochemistry? There are hundreds and hundreds of parameters which are to be estimated to diagnose different diseases. But most of the diseases are common diseases. For that, we will do some common parameters, estimation of common parameters. These common parameters are generally estimated in all the laboratories, okay? even in our Gayatri hospital also. For rare parameters are estimated only in some specified labs, but there are some common parameters which are estimated in all the labs. So these are some common parameters in the biochemistry lab. So blood sugar levels, you know RBS, FBS, PPBS, that is random blood sugar, fasting blood sugar, and postprandial blood sugar. Okay. So random blood sugar is estimation of glucose levels at any point of time in the day. And the fasting blood sugar is estimation of blood sugar in the fasting state of the patient for 10 to 12 hours. And postprandial is uh, after taking food, after two hours, the sample will be taken that is known as postprandial blood sugar. So these are the different uh, uh, types of blood sugar levels and these are estimated in laboratory. These can be estimated in semi auto analyzer or in the fully auto analyzer depending upon the sample load. And renal function test. So these include serum creatinine, blood urea, and electrolytes, sodium, potassium, and chloride. Electrolytes are estimated in the electrolyte analyzer, and creatinine, urea are estimated in the semi auto analyzer or in the fully auto analyzer. And liver function test. If a patient is affected with the liver diseases, there will be change in these parameters. Okay, total bilirubin, direct bilirubin, AST, ALT. Alkaline phosphatase, total protein, and albin. If the patient is suffering from liver disease, there will be variation in the normal levels of these parameters, then we can suspect from liver disease. Lipid profile. So, if there is any change in the <coughs> lipid metabolism, uh, we can uh, see the variation in the normal levels of these parameters. So, these include total cholesterol, HDL, LDL, VLDL, and triglycerides. These are estimated in the lipid profile. Okay. These are generally estimated in a patient in which we suspect some lipid abnormality, which are seen in cardiovascular diseases. So if there is any variation in the normal levels, we can suspect some abnormality or disease in the cardiovascular system. And the other parameters that we estimate is serum calcium, phosphorus, which are generally done in the bone diseases and serum uric acid levels which we will estimate in, in, in to see any there is gout primary gout or secondary gout we will see the uric acid levels 
which are accumulated in the joints and which cause inflammation of the joint arthritis okay. and we'll estimate serum amylase which we'll estimate in uh, pancreatitis acute pancreatitis there will be increased levels of amylase so in that case if we suspect any patient is having pancreatitis we will send the sample of the patient for serum amylase if the serum amylase is increased that implies the patient is affected with the acute or uh, pancreatitis okay and hb anc we know we will estimate the hb anc in hb anc analyzer which is used to see the control the glucose control in the diabetic patient okay after medication for 3 months it, it generally uh, gives the approximately for 3 months okay control of glucose level for 3 months because hb anc is nothing but it's a combination of hemoglobin and glucose and the uh, lifespan of the rbc which contains hemoglobin is 120 days that is 3 months so next class is elisa which is taken by the some other faculty okay thank you hope everyone understood and all of you utilize the time properly thank you So just I am focusing the slides once. Hope everyone is there. Just if anyone missed, they can follow it. So these instruments are required for uh, investigations and diagnosis. All the instruments and these are the common instruments: centrifuge, colorimeter, semi-auto analyzer, fully auto analyzer, ultra-light analyzer, HB ions analyzer, incubator, and distilled water apparatus. and centrifuge is used to separate the serum and blood cells this is a centrifuge and this is calorimeter uh, different steps are there in calorimeter the pipetting and uh, incubation and taking the ods and calculation 
So all these are done manually in the calorimeter. You can see the 15 incubation OD is calculation and uh, semi auto analyzer, fully auto analyzer, which will do some part by the machine. In semi auto analyzer, some part is done by the machine. These are semi auto analyzers. You can see here some part is done by the machines, 15 incubation and reading and calculation is done by the analyzer. And these are fully auto analyzer. All the steps are done by the fully auto analyzer. Okay. Fully auto analyzer is already always connected with the monitor. And the reagents, cuvettes are placed. And the uh, reaction cuvettes are also placed. Here you can see the reaction cuvettes. And electrolyte analyzer is used for sodium, potassium, and chloride. And uh, HbA1c analyzer, which is used for analysis of HbA1c, incubator to maintain the temperature for the reaction between the reagents and the sample to be carried comfortably. This is the incubator and distilled water apparatus to provide distilled water. And we had seen the common parameters. So, in different systemic diseases, different parameters or the levels of different parameters will be abnormal in different diseases. Okay, next class is LSR. All right, so, if you're having any doubt, you can ask in the chat. Okay. So you can type the message so that I can see your message. So someone raise their hands in between. You can type the message so that I can see your message. So no doubts. So you're not asking any doubts in the class and even in video class also. Okay, then thank you.